Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, we're back. We're talking about Homecoming. This is Banshee's episode that aired tonight, March 7th, 2014. If you haven't had an opportunity to watch that episode, stop listening now. Major spoilers. Here we go. This is part two of the podcast, man. Um, we talked about um, an incident that happened with Job. Um, he got hit by a car. We don't know if he's alive or not. We talked about the situation now between the Bowtie Man and Rebecca. They now have drama. They now have issues together. We talked about a new character man called um, um, Julian's um, uh, Boner. And we also uh, talked about um, uh, Rabbit is back. And he's uh, he, was, he was seen tonight. And he's with his brother, uh, Eulish. Um, and we also uh, talked about um, Emmett. Um, and that was in a previous um, podcast that's not kind of part of this series, but kind of is. So go back and listen to those, man, if you haven't. Uh, moving on, man. Um, awesome scene tonight, man, between uh, Sugar Bates, man, and uh, Kai Proctor, man. You know me. i huge fan of Sugar Bates, man. Sugar Bates is, is the show, man. You know, he is, he is, he is the, the sound of reason, man. He's the voice of reason. He is, he is wisdom, man. He is... <laughs> he's the dopest damn character they got on this show, man. I love it. And uh, I think that seriously, man, without Sugar Bates, man, calming down everybody, there will be hell to pay, man. There will be nothing but death in Banshee. Let's just go ahead and put it that way. Sugar Bates not opening that bar, okay? It'll be death. You know? That's just, let's just be honest, man. You know? Because if Sugar Bates didn't open the bar, then Lucas Hood wouldn't have a place to stay, okay? If Sugar Bates didn't open the bar, then guess what? Lucas wouldn't even have a Lucas Hood. Lucas Hood wouldn't be Lucas Hood, who is not really the Lucas, the real Lucas Hood. He's a, he's an imposter, all right? If, if, if uh, Sugar Bates didn't, you know, open up his uh, bar, you know, then Kai Proctor and Sugar Bates would have never became friends. Now, let's get into that. That's why I kind of went back and I said all that stuff. The relationship between Kai Proctor and Sugar Bates is no more. It's over. As of tonight, man, called Homecoming, uh, Kai Proctor says, You aren't family. You made your choice. And once I get out of prison, if you were in my way when I come after Lucas Hood and everybody else that put me here, I'm going to cut you down. And in Sugar Bates, man, he's, God, it don't have to be that way. No, actually, it does. <laughs> that was me. That was that was me doing Sugar Bates, and then I did Kai Proctor. Did you get that? Okay, that's dope. Yeah, that's that's pretty much what happened, man. And, you know, Sugar Bates was trying to be the voice of reason. He was like, "Listen, man, um, we can end this, man. We can still be family. Let me know what you need. I can bring stuff to you, man. I don't know. I can bring you a um, a, a, make you a cake, man, and put a file in there and help you break out of prison, you know. But Kai Proctor's like, I don't need your cake, <laughs> you know. I don't. <laughs> I don't need your cake, but as soon as I get out of here, I'm going to feed you some cake of death, all right? And that's that's pretty much what happened, all right? Um, Deputy Kelly, man, she's starting to uh, question Lucas Hood, and she doesn't really understand um, what's going on with him. Uh, but before we go there, man, we have to go back to the prison, all right? Because we're kind of trying to go in order and kind of showing everything that's happening. Um, Kai Proctor, being in prison, all right? Gets a visit from his mother. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, that's what I'm talking about, yeah? Um, you know me, man. I, 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 Every single character inside of Banshee, every single character is a really great character, man. So whenever you see these characters, you know, reappear on screen, if they've been gone for a little, a little while, man, you get excited, man. You get nervous. You get anxious. All right? And you know the relationship between Kai Proctor and his father is not good, but his mother, man, he still has a little bit of respect, it seems, for her, man. And tonight, she just pretty much bared it all, man. She said that um, the reason why Kai Proctor is in jail is you know, the reason why, you know, talking to Kai Proctor, the reason why you're in jail is because of us. It's because of, of your father and I. It's because of our um, uh, misconception, man, of, of, of God and, and what's right and, and our um, holier-than-thou attitude, just to kind of sum it up. And it, it, it broke Kai Proctor down, man. Like, he, he cries, man. And I was like, what? Like, you know, you never seen Kai Proctor vulnerable, man. He's just been a strong character. And tonight, when he broke down, I'm just like, yo, this has got to be the end. This has to be the end, man. This dude has officially snapped. And so, therefore, you know, the season finale, you know, there's he, you can't hold anything back. 
Because everybody knows, man, when you re when you release that t that built up tension and that anger after you cried and you're emotional, man, all that does is that makes you feel a whole lot better. But it also pushes you back. It makes you back into your original self, man. You see what I'm saying? So now that he's in, he's in, uh, he's he's cried inside of the um, uh, family room, okay. Then he goes back into prison, and all he has time to do, he doesn't have the time to think about his parents anymore because that relationship is mended. So now all he has to do is think about his revenge. I'm going to kill Lucas Hood. I'm going to kill Sugar Bates. I'm going to kill Job. I'm going to kill Kerry. I'm going to kill the whole town. I'm going to burn it to the ground, and there's nothing you can do about it. That's pretty much what's going on in his head right now. Love that. Uh, <laughs> The um, the case, man, that has Kai Proctor in prison um, has been brought against him between uh, or, or because of the um, um, testimony of Juliet the Stripper, um, Alex Longshadow. And what's kind of crazy, man, is that tonight, man, uh, Alex Longshadow made his move, man. And when I say made his move, I mean he made his move on Rebecca. Yeah, man. <laughs> can't believe that, yo. I can't. It doesn't make any sense. I don't know, man, but you know that that's the thing about Banshee, man. You know, <laughs> whatever you think, <laughs> whatever you think should happen, it doesn't happen. It just it doesn't, man. And that's what's so amazing. You can't, I can't guess it. I can't guess it, man. I can't see it coming. Um, there's 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 no explaining why Long Shadow decided to kiss Rebecca. Besides, what I think it is, um, is because he knows that. The situation between Kai Proctor and Rebecca, there's something there. I think everybody can kind of see that, you know what I'm saying? So now, you know, here comes Long Shadow. He kisses Rebecca. And it's almost like they made this this pact, if you will, you know, because she didn't push him away. She didn't, man. She, I mean, she wiped her lip off, you know, and was like, hmm, that's nasty, you know. But, I mean, that, but that was after he left and he had already done his deed and... and, and <laughs> There was nothing else that uh that that could be done, man. So she goes to the um to the prison to go visit Kai Proctor with the lawyer to kind of give him an update of the situation that's going on with his case. She says this, man. And this is in regards to um whenever um Kai Proctor was like, you know, Alex Longshadow, he has some balls in him this time. You know, he's finally uh, stepped up, and I'm very surprised at that. And um, I guess he's sure that he wants to go forward with, you know, the prosecution and then helping out the other side or whatever. And then um, um, she, and then the, the lawyer says something about, like, um, do you think there's any way um, that you can let, you know, someone take care of that or whatever? And then he's like, you know, we'll, 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 we'll see later on. And then Rebecca says uh, he seemed very sure. And as soon as she said that, and, and that, that was kind of like talking about business matters, you know, as soon as she said that, you know, Kai Proctor looked over Rebecca with this, with this look like, you know, he wanted to kill her soul. And it, I don't even know how to really explain it, man, besides like he looked out of the corner of his eye, man, you know, just glared at her, man. And then after that, you know, he gave her this cold shoulder, man. It was like, Rebecca, go home. I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you tomorrow. But it wasn't like, you know, like they normally do, which is kind of, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, man. I th I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know what to say about that. But but something's going to happen in regards to that, man. That was crazy. Um, we then go to um, Alex uh, Longshadow's uh, room, house, uh, office, whatever you want to say. And then here comes George. We all know George, all right? He's the other Native American character um, that was on the council. And... Uh, <laughs> He has this knife, man, and, he, and, and to make a long story short, this knife was passed down generations to generation. Um, George himself doesn't have a kid, so he pulls this knife out as he's talking, telling the story, and the music just changes. Everything in the scene changes. It gets serious, and George takes off his hat. He takes off his coat. It's kind of crazy. I don't, I don't know why they did it that way, but maybe just to kind of show you that you know George is a threat. You know, he's not some old guy. He's he's still a threat, so Alex needs to kind of keep him in the you know and remember that. But he t tells Alex this whole entire story about you know not being able to pass it down to his grandson, and um, I only take this out on on special occasions, and this is a special occasion. And then instead of handing um, Alex the knife, he throws it, and all of a sudden you just hear this, and you you just like and then you hear you hear Alex go. <gasps> Like he gasped, like he got hit. And then all of a sudden, I'm sitting here like, oh my gosh, no, no, no. 
I'm just, I, I don't know, man. I start panicking, okay? And then all of a sudden, you know, here comes, here comes the amazing director on Banshee just kind of zooming out. And the knife, George's knife, is stuck into the chair, you know, kind of right next to, into the wall. Um, above or to the side of uh, um, Alex Longshadow's head, so it's not it didn't hit him. They just did it to just be dramatic and to you know cause a, a panic, and that's exactly what they did. I think it was very successful with them doing it that way. I mean, I thought that seriously, George was gonna come in there and murder um, Alex Longshadow. Man, that's that's just it's just crazy, man. Um, we then go over towards uh, Brock, man, and Brock brings a heavy file, man, to Gordon, man, and. This pretty much seals um, Brock's deal with Gordon. Um, Brock will become sheriff now. Uh, Lucas Hood is pretty much out, man. Um, and, and then the information that he bought was the um, information about the warehouse being burned down. How uh, Lucas Hood took Brock and a few other deputies over to investigate um, this this warehouse and the, and the uh, people that were in the warehouse and around the warehouse trying to you know get them to snitch on uh, Kai Proctor. It didn't work, but then all of a sudden the warehouse explodes, and now Gordon is like, "Whoa, okay, yeah." And you know what's kind of crazy about this man is uh, later on in the episode, I'm kind of going to fast forward just a little bit. Brock puts his feet up on the desk inside of uh, Lucas Hood's office. Smoking a cigar as in like this celebration type way. Lucas Hood wasn't supposed to be there uh, because obviously Brock was on night shift. Lucas Hood was not supposed to be on duty. And Lucas Hood walks in. It's just one of those moments, man, where you just like, whoa, man, this is the future. This is something's going to happen, man. Either either Brock is going to get his way or Lucas stays and, and Brock go. I mean, that's there's, there's no other way it can go. Both of those guys can't stay inside of Banshee PD. Um, I don't even know if the show is... I mean, the show is called Banshee. Obviously, it's not called Banshee PD. So, maybe the show... I don't know how they're going to make it out of here, man. <laughs> That's where I'm at right now. I don't, I don't know how they're going to do this, man. Um, moving on, moving on. <laughs> Let me... <laughs> yeah, alright, move... <laughs> Moving on, man. Uh, Carrie and Gordon, man, they reunite. We're also going to talk about, because I'm going to end this podcast real quick. Uh, Carrie and Gordon move on. Um, um, Job uh, calls Lucas. So we find out that Job is alive. Uh, Deputy Kelly, man, is still not sure about Lucas Hood. And they end up breaking up. And we'll talk about that, man, the next podcast in detail, man. Um, And uh, yeah, that's it. Thanks for listening.